Are you considering moving to Florida, but you have a family member that has special needs and you're not really sure what the benefits are in the state of Florida. You're not sure what kind of programs are offered in Florida. You're not sure about the support system specifically in the Northeast area of Florida. Well, today is a special treat because I interview an ABA specialist, Amanda Davidson, who has over a decade of experience, and I really pick her brain about all the information that you would need as a family that have a child with special needs, specifically in Florida, um, specifically in the Jacksonville, St. Augustine area. And uh, we go into depth about the programs that are available. Um, and we even talk about the comparisons of moving to the state of Florida compared to, say, Colorado, for instance. So it's a really, really informative interview that I had the pleasure and privilege of being a part of. And again, for me, it's not just about finding a home for somebody moving to a specific area, but finding a place where they have security for their family and the support system as well. Um, a place they can truly call home. So let's get into this interview now. If this is your first time on the channel and you want to know everything about living in Jacksonville and the surrounding areas, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and tap the alerts bell so that you can be the first to know about what's going on here in the Jacksonville area. My name is Greg and I get calls from people just like you looking to make a move to the Jacksonville area and I love it. So whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days, shoot me a text, send me an email, give me a call. My information will be in the description and we'll make your move to Jacksonville a smooth one. Uh, today's interview, we're going to go ahead and talk about all the benefits about living in Florida and the support system for families with children with special needs. So let's get after it now. All right, today is a very special recording. Uh, I have a guest on today, and uh, she was nice enough to take off some time on her Sunday <laughs> to uh, answer some questions for me so that I could be a little bit more educated in, in providing good information for people that are looking to move to the Jacksonville area. So um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce everybody to Amanda Davidson. Amanda, say hello. Hello. Thanks for having me, Greg. Yes. So Amanda and I go back a while and her husband and her family, of course. Uh, I actually sold their home and uh, moved them into a brand new home. And which is even greater is they're now my neighbors. So yes. <laughs> double win right there. But, but. <laughs> yes. And and I get and you know what? You you can pick the, the house you want to live in, but you don't get to pick your neighbors. So yeah, I'm sure. super blessed to have you guys. Oh, uh, and likewise. <laughs> yes. So the reason I have Amanda on today is because um, I get a lot of people calling, you know, from YouTube living in Jacksonville and they want to move to the area and they are specifically families that have children with autism. And to be honest with you, I am rather ignorant on the subject. And my job is not just about selling houses. Mm -hmm. It's about providing a home for a family that that they love and they're happy. And then we have that long term relationship where, you know, you really helped us find the right place where we feel safe, secure and support. And, um, you know, sometimes. People have these circumstances and I want to help them the best way I can and. I didn't really know in Jacksonville that we had support system or resources for autism. I know in St. Augustine, they have a school for uh, people that are having issues with uh, hearing issues like myself, yeah. school for the deaf and the blind. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew nothing about autism. Uh, I have had a few families reach out. And also, really quick, I'll mention my my children who are five and seven, but even when they were younger, we kept going to this gym all the time here in Jacksonville. And I didn't know that it was specifically geared around for children around autism. We didn't even notice it. Right, uh, right. Yeah, I forgot the name of it already. We were off the spectrum. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Awesome place. So much, yeah. I liked it so much that I was like, how do you open up a franchise that's sure, closer yeah. to where we live because it's in Jacksonville. It's not so close to where we are here in, in Nocatee. And, um, and, and I had no idea. They were <laughs> like, well, you have to have a child that has autism or you need to be in the field. 
right. to be able to have a, so isn't that weird how I found out that way? Yeah. And then I, and then I met you guys and I, I know you had mentioned it, but I, I deal with so many people all the time that I'd forgotten that that's kind of like your wheelhouse, sure. right? Yeah. And so I went on, I, you know, you Google it and I'm like, where's the information I can provide with these families? Mm -hmm. And honestly, I, again, looking at it, if you look, even if you just Google best places to live with children with autism, Colorado is number one, mm -hmm. Massachusetts is number two, New Jersey is number three, four is Connecticut, five is Maryland, six is New York, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Rhode Island, Montana. Where is Florida? <laughs> um, and where is Jacksonville? I mean, basically it says be near big cities where mm -hmm. you can have, you know, provide the resources. And, and, and listen, for me, it's close to my heart. I have two children. Mm -hmm. I truly believe I was ADHD. Mm -hmm. I have hearing, I have hearing impair, impairments. Sure. And I didn't discover that stuff till I was an adult. And right. had my parents had the resources then, maybe it wouldn't have taken me five years to get a bachelor's degree because I should have had a doctorate by the time I got out of school. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So if I have somebody asking me who's thinking about moving the area, first off, can you tell us? Do we have the resources here in Jacksonville? How does it compare to the rest of the Florida? How does it compare to other states? I just want you to unload today as much information as you can, and I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> oh, and first, start off with what your credentials are. So yes, of course. Are so yeah. um, I, my name is Amanda Davidson. I am a board-certified behavior analyst, BCBA, and um, I've been certified for the last almost 13 years and have worked uh, the last 10 years here in Northeast Florida. And then um, also in Arizona and Alabama. So I've had exposure with multiple different states and often um, I'm referring families, you know, throughout the United States to get them access to services if they move out of state. So I'm fairly familiar with kind of what the United States has to offer. Um, one benefit for families with autism is that um, our field has worked very hard in behavior analysis to help get legislature passed so that each state has an autism mandate requiring insurance policies to cover autism services for ABA therapy. Um, so speech and OT services have already been covered, which is wonderful. Um, the last piece of that was the behavioral therapy piece. So I'm happy to say that that finally is happening. So that's great. Um, but in terms of the Jacksonville area, we actually do have a pretty robust uh, set of resources for all types of services, all types of supports and things like that. So um, the benefit, of course, for Jacksonville is that we are close to two very large military bases, so Mayport and NAS Jax. And a lot of military families will actually relocate specifically here or to Colorado, for example, because we have an exceptional family members program. Um, so that just means that Jacksonville has been designated as a site that has such robust resources with Moors and Wolfson's speech, OT, ABA therapy, that families are able to come here and be able to have access to whatever they need versus a more rural area that would be less supported. And that's just not unique to military families, but that's kind of a lot of what you'll see in terms of relocation. But for all families, I would say in general, there's a lot of um, options out there for them. Yeah. I mean, people don't realize this. And I've talked about this in one of my previous videos. I mean, there's 90,000 people of our population are employed by the military here in yeah. Jacksonville. So there's yeah. a large presence. Absolutely. And so based on what you're telling me uh, in the state of Florida, if people there, it, insurance is to cover this, uh, the support for these families, basically. Yeah. So, um, and that's specific to ABA therapy, which is the specialty that I provide. But um, speech and OT as well is covered, physical therapy. Generally, those just need a uh, referral from the physician in terms of medical necessity, indicating that, yes, this child needs this service and here's why. But in terms of ABA therapy, um, you know, five, six years ago, even, we were looking at families having to self-pay for these services, which was, you know, very, very difficult for them. Um, they're already quite stressed, you know, as a family because they have this diagnosis and now they're trying to get services and learn oh, hey, unfortunately, it's only covered by self-pay or only X amount of insurers were covering it. So now the mandate states that everyone has to have access to it, which is wonderful. Um, there are still, unfortunately, some caveats that will prevent coverage. But uh, for the most part, I think that, you know, across the United States, we've done a good job of identifying why this is important. Um, and especially in the Jacksonville area, 
We have um, a lot of different resources in terms of psychologists, speech therapy, occupational therapy, ABA therapy, physical therapy, um, and also um, the Center for Autism and Related Disabilities is a good resource. Um, they provide, you know, kind of blanket opportunities for families to access care or um, get their child diagnosed if they had some suspicions maybe that, you know, their child could qualify they can go there or to another licensed psychologist and get an evaluation done, which is huge because then that opens the door to all these different services. Okay. So slow, slow down, slow down. Is that local here in Jacksonville? It is, is local. Center? So yeah. Okay. It's what was it again? Uh, it's the center for autism and related disabilities. Okay. All right. We're going to put this stuff also in the description yeah. folks so that you have all this information. Can you just really quick for maybe people that are ignorant or maybe have a, a newborn or something like that. What is ABA therapy again? So ABA therapy uh, essentially is a science-based therapy where we look at socially significant problem behaviors that are happening for children, adolescents, adults. Um, it does not need to be utilized for individuals with autism, although it is extremely effective for individuals with autism. Uh, really, we work on teaching functional communication skills, uh, reducing behavioral issues, tantrums, and really teaching replacement behaviors for children. So instead of crying, um, because I lost my toy, I teach you to request to get okay. access to the toy. So okay, so it's not specifically geared for children with uh, or with autism. It's actually it can be used really with, with anybody. Um, it's been a lot in terms of the news, um, you know, and it's a gold standard treatment by the Surgeon General, and you know, it's become kind of the treatment for individuals on the spectrum. But certainly can be used for any child. Okay, got it. Um, is there a specific reason why, I mean, you said you came here from Arizona, you were in Alabama. Was there a specific reason why y'all came to uh, Jacksonville, Florida? Uh, the opportunity was wonderful here. And I also wanted to be closer to my parents who lived um, on the East Coast. But okay. really, um, in terms of services, they were pretty robust across the country. Um, but we were specifically attracted to the Jacksonville area. Yeah. Like, I go over, over it. Over and over again, uh, St. John's County is why we moved here. It mm -hmm. has the best public school system in the state of Florida, yeah. which is which people don't realize that's a big deal because the state of Florida is, used to be mainly a retirement state mm -hmm. pre-COVID. I mean, whenever you said you live in Florida, they would always say, oh, my grandparents live there or whatever, yeah. you know. <laughs> and and so most of the people voting were 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 elderly folks and they weren't voting to help put more money into our education system because their kids are already gone. That's mm -hmm. not one of their main priorities. So it's 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 an anomaly that up here in Northeast Florida, St. John's County is such a phenomenal school district. We're all super blessed. Yes. Um, I feel like it's a it's a family oriented area. Like it's like a family oriented area on steroids almost. Mm -hmm. And and, um, you know, we all struggle with children. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just tough being a parent absolutely and then you add that whatever other challenges you're dealing with um mm -hmm. and you know you just want to be in that environment where people just totally understand you know right. you think it's only your kid and they're like oh mine does it all the time right. like, yeah. all right it's not my daughter's yeah. everybody else is doing it too yeah. um so why when i do google it why doesn't florida come up i mean is it not quite there yet or or jackson it depends on the question that's being asked in google to be honest so if you are looking into the specific therapies mm -hmm. then you'll see much more in terms of resources but if you just google like is jacksonville a, a good place to raise a child with special needs you know you may not get as much information back as you would for some of these other states i would say some of the states that are mentioned um have put a lot of infrastructure into providing more support to their constituents. So okay. sometimes that becomes an issue just like funding wise and lobbying and things like that. But um, mm -hmm. in general, I would say we do a really fantastic job of making sure that families have a lot of opportunities for services. It's just, you know, honing in and maybe finding like more of a one-stop resource for families to go to um, so that they know what to look for because especially newly diagnosed families, they're navigating this sometimes on their own um, and it'd be incredibly helpful for folks to have somebody to go to or some sort of resource to be able to say, what do I do next? You know, I have the diagnosis, but now what happens? Okay. So do we have anything like that? A one-stop resource? We don't quite have a one-stop resource. CARD is wonderful. Um, but again, what is? Sorry? Uh, CARD, the Center for Autism and Related Disabilities. 
Okay. Um, Heal um, is another agency here that, you know, helps families navigate additional supports or grants. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's another group called Making Strides for Autism that families can join. These are the, the latter two are more of like parental support opportunities. Sure. Um, but there are a lot of like sibling groups and um, parent supports where they can kind of all meet with other families that have children on the spectrum and develop some relationships. Um, it's kind of specific to where you are, but um, those groups are great. They do a lot of different, you know, outreach opportunities and fundraising and things like that. But I think that that's something in general that um, I think our little area in Northeast Florida could do a better job of, of just having like a one-stop area in terms of resources for families to refer to and know that that's where you kind of start. Yeah. And you were talking about some of these groups. Are there are some of these groups stronger in certain parts of Jacksonville than other areas? Do do people pick where they're going to live based on where this the strength of the support is is in proximity or? So some families will. So one thing I'll kind of mention there. Uh, sometimes there are two different routes that families can take. They can take a clinic based approach, or they can take in home uh, therapy approach. Uh, the advantage to doing clinic based is maybe that you're only driving to one area of town and maybe you can get ABA, speech, OT all kind of in the same location. And then the child is there for a couple hours getting all of their therapies. And then mom and dad aren't trying to navigate the Jacksonville traffic, which is helpful. Um, sometimes the disadvantage of that is that, you know, you're not in there with the child. So you're still getting feedback from the therapist, but maybe you want to see a little bit more of what's going on so you can implement it at home which is why some families will elect for in-home services, again, for ABA, speech, and OT, um, just to make sure that they're able to kind of see what's going on and maybe not have to drive around and worry about pickup schedules and things like that. So um, there's lots of different options for families. Some of them do a hybrid model, just whatever works best for them. But that's another piece of the puzzle that tends to be challenging for families. So Step one, you have the diagnosis. Okay, great, that opened the door to therapy. Now we can pursue services. Oh, wait, I also have to get Johnny to school, you know, um, yeah. and Sarah has karate practice, but you have, you know, all these other obligations that you're trying to meet at the same time. So it can be quite challenging. Yeah. And so the other option besides going to an, a center is finding a private provider. Yeah. So care. then they'll come to your home and provide the therapy there. So a lot of times uh, this will be covered by insurance. Sometimes agencies just do a self-pay model, um, but you can call the different agencies and just ask, you know, what's your availability like? And then do you accept insurance? And if you do, what's the process to get started? Um, and then they'll be able to set them up and hopefully be able to come to their home or have you set up in the clinic so that therapies can be provided as soon as possible. So as far as the clinics go, where are those geographically mostly located? A lot of them are in Jacksonville, uh, but there are quite a few in the St. John's area as well. Um, some of the bigger companies such as Brooks um, and Nemours offer some of the, we call them allied health services, which are speech, occupational therapy, physical therapy, uh, neurology, some of these allied services or specialties that um, are often helpful for children on the spectrum. Because the other thing I'll mention is um, back in 2000, the prevalence was one in 150 children. And today, the prevalence, uh, according to the CDC, is one in 44. Uh, and boys are four times more likely to be diagnosed um, than girls. So there is certainly a need for all of these different services. And with autism, comes a lot of other kind of comorbid diagnoses, which just means other, you know, diagnoses that come with it, such as, you know, asthma or constipation issues or food selectivity. So there's a lot that can kind of go into this puzzle for families. So I think it's important that they are in an area that has a lot of different types of support so they can put together the best possible schedule for them. Okay. I am just generally slow, not sure if it's been diagnosed, but you said the prevalence is one in 44. Can you explain that a little better to me? Sorry. No, so that just means that one in 44 children are being diagnosed with autism today. Wow. Is, yeah. is, is there a case where people don't know for, they don't realize it? So it they can don't be. Um, and unfortunately, so with the pandemic, uh, obviously there's been a lot of changes for all families. Um, but mm -hmm. with the pandemic, you know, a lot of folks maybe were not out and about as much as they were just because of the health and safety um, concerns. And now they're getting out and about and they're realizing 
hey, you know, Johnny's eye contact is not as strong as, you know, I saw this other child at the park or his preschool teacher noted that there are some issues with um, social exchanges and things like that. So more families are starting, I think, to get diagnosed, um, which is helpful. But a lot of families, unfortunately, do have to wait quite a long time before they're able to get diagnosed. So you may notice a concern and then it takes six months potentially to get an evaluation done and then get the diagnosis and proceed from there. I think that in general, um, Jacksonville has a lot more um, licensed psychologists that are able to diagnose. Uh, so there's a little bit more fluidity um, in that mm -hmm. timeline, but it can be a challenge for families. It's not like, oh, today um, I noticed something was wrong and tomorrow I have a diagnosis and boom, I have a plan. Some of these families unfortunately wait um, three to six months to even get the diagnosis and then proceed from there. Yeah, I mean, I imagine too, and and this is a case. A lot of my my clients from states that were uh, in lockdown a lot longer mm -hmm. with younger children. I was coming to find out they had uh, major social disorders because mm -hmm. they weren't around other children and they were very young, and yeah. it just affected them as they grew older. Sure. Um, so I know a lot of families have to work through that. Mm -hmm. And then I can't imagine if you're not even sure properly diagnosed if it's more than that or less right. than that. Yeah. You know, these kind of things, you know, enough to drive you crazy as a parent because you want to help your child. Yeah. You know, exactly. you know, I, I didn't know that my daughter was having asthma problems. You know, right. you go to the regular uh, primary doc or mm -hmm. and, and oh, it's just allergies. There's mm -hmm. a lot of pollen. They're all coughing. Sure. And then Saturday, my daughters can barely breathe. And I'm like, yeah. what is going on? Yeah. You know, so it's really important to go find the resources, the people that specialize specifically mm -hmm. with whatever it is that you you can see that's going on. Absolutely. You know, um, Let's talk about the schools and how that works. Is are are the schools? Are, I mean, I know we can talk about St. John's County because we have children in St. John's County. Uh, even in Duval or St. John's, does it matter? Could you tell us what the programs are like and what they offer for children? Yes. So depending on the age, um, especially when children are younger. So let's talk about like the zero to three year age range. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a program called Early Steps and Early Steps. Um, Say that again. Sorry, you cut out. Say that again. Oh, Early Steps. Early Steps. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that program is helpful for families that maybe don't necessarily have a diagnosis. They noticed a speech delay or that, you know, eye contact was not quite right and they want to get services. And that's a state funded program. And mm -hmm they're able to get started with some therapies through that program. Um, and then once they kind of graduate, once they become three, then you move into what's called Child Find. Uh, and Child Find is what lets the school systems know, and this is state, well, I don't know necessarily if it's statewide, it is at least in Northeast Florida, um, a resource that will connect you with the school system. So wherever you are, let's say you live in South Jacksonville or you live in North St. Johns County, you'll be connected with somebody in the district that will call you and start the intake process and get you established with the school system. So that way they can start pre-K and also get something called an IEP, which is an individualized education program. Um, and that is super helpful. I know acronyms, right? <laughs> yeah, but not only that, um, that I mean, helpful. there's so many different organizations and yes. acronyms and programs. Exactly. And yeah, it's so easy, isn't it? Oh um, my gosh, you're just <laughs> rattling them out like it was nothing. We've got to get all this on the description below. I just know. for people. We okay. will, we will. So go ahead. Okay, keep uh, going. No, you're so. Fine. so the IEP is helpful because it is a legally mandated document, meaning that anyone that comes into contact with that child needs to do what's in that plan. So if it says that Johnny has to um, have speech therapy services twice a week for 15 minutes, that has to happen regardless of when it's happening in the day. Or if he needs to have, um, we call it preferential seating, meaning he needs to sit closer to the teacher so that he can get that feedback, then that has to happen. Or um, specific treatment goals that they're working on with the school. This kind of outlines like what are the deficits? What are the things we need to work on to support Johnny? And then how do we build from that and go from there? So it's a year long system with the IEP and you have a meeting with your team and you evaluate what's working, what's not working. They present the data to you to show you, hey, he mastered these goals. And then you set new goals for the next year. Um, and that stays in place with them, regardless in the district of where they go. 
Okay, so again, bringing it back down to my level, when my child is in a classroom and notices that one of her classmates has an additional teacher, is that one of those programs that uh, somebody it comes could be, in? Or it could be something called a 504 plan, because let's throw another acronym your way. <laughs> sure, um, why not? And that is essentially an accommodations plan, which just says, he or she needs these accommodations in school to be successful. It may be pull out services for speech, uh, for social skills, occupational therapy, things like that. But it says we need to have these things in place to make sure that this child is successful. The IEP um, carries a little bit more weight in terms of, you know, making sure that additional communication goals, daily living goals um, are included in there as well. Um, so it really is going to depend on what the family is looking for. Um, autism is a spectrum. So I'm sure you've kind of learned that through your research. You know, no one child uh, is the same. So the varying exceptionalities that come with autism will dictate whether or not you need an IEP plan or a 504. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, and then speaking of education, just one thing that also throw out there, uh, the state of Florida does have something called the McKay Scholarship. Uh, that has recently blended into a new program. Uh, but if you Google McKay Scholarship, uh, people will be able to find what I'm referencing. But uh, essentially, this is a school choice program, which says that if your child has been enrolled in public school for one year um, and you decide that public school is not the best fit, you are able to take the funds allocated within your child's individual education plan and allocate those to private school. Wow, that's amazing. Sure. Yeah, it's a good program. Would would you think is there does it really in specifically in this area of Northeast Florida? I mean, does it really matter to you as a parent? Uh, I, I guess it depends on the child, but I mean, do you ever think as a parent, I'd rather have them in private school? How do I get them in that? Is that a privilege or, or what? Um, some families will prefer it just because of you know smaller class sizes, or um, some programs are more heavily uh, therapy based, so it's like a lot of functional skills that are being taught. So functional math skills that, you know, this child will need to be successful in life and daily living skills to be successful. And then also a therapeutic approach, uh, or it's a heavily academic based program, but they have smaller class sizes like eight children instead of 18. Mm -hmm. um, so really it's very much individualized based on what the family is looking for. Um, but there's lots of different options. There's inclusion programs where you have, uh, we call them neurotypical children, children that don't have a diagnosis and then children that do have a diagnosis and they're kind of blended together uh, in the same classroom. So that way they have some opportunities to be with children that don't have a diagnosis and learn from them as well. Yeah. I believe in iron sharpens iron. So I, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't think I don't, you know, I wouldn't want just a child to feel completely out of place, but sure. yeah. if a child can be around other children and be normal. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then the other thing I need to ask, I mean, you're talking about IEP, 504, blah, blah, blah. I mean, are these hard for parents to get qualified for? Are these easily accessible for them if they um, move so here? It's not hard to qualify for, but we always recommend that you have some sort of advocate with you, whether it's um, the psychologist that diagnosed that can kind of give you some additional resources or your speech or OT therapist or your ABA therapist, or they do have educational advocates that you can hire that will come with you and be a part of the IEP or 504 uh, process. So that way they can tell you again, what should be included for your specific child um, or you know what your rights are, which are really important to understand. So if you're new to the area, how do you find an educational advocate? Uh, you can Google it, or uh, if you speak with somebody that you know, you've already started a therapeutic relationship with, they should be able to get you in touch. To refer you to someone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, what is the first thing when you're moving to an area that you're thinking you need right off the bat? Like, what is top of the list? Uh, that is very family dependent, <laughs> unfortunately. Okay. But I would say um, one of the first things that families are looking for is to get up their therapies started. They're okay. uh, concerned about the schools. They want to make sure that their child is in an enriching environment. But for a lot of families, the first concern is how do I get my ABA speech and OT and a psychologist and or psychiatrist if their child takes medication. How do I get that team established and then focus on the school and the supports needed there? Okay. So where, where is this just like way too generalized, but is there, if somebody said money's no object, I want the best of the best. Where is the best in Jacksonville? 
unfortunately too specialized of a question. It's really going to depend on what the family is looking for when they mean what is the best of the best. Um, yeah. So do they mean clinic based? Do they mean in home? Um, you know, what are they? Do they want insurance coverage? Um, and knowing that there are wait lists, unfortunately, with a lot of different providers right now, just because the need is there and everyone's trying to meet that need, but um, it takes hiring people and you know infrastructure and all that. So um, it's really hard to say like what's the gold seal here in this area, but um, it differs for every family. So I would say you have to find a team that you feel comfortable with and that your child is comfortable with, and that takes interviewing them and asking um, some difficult questions sometimes. Um, but I always recommend to families like interview around and find where you feel like the best fit is gonna be for your child and where you feel most at home. Um, don't just go with the first person that has availability. Yeah. I mean, if you're moving to the Jacksonville area though, like how do you know which, which area will people gravitate towards? Is it because the best schools are in St. John's County? They may come this direction too. Yeah, so some families will hear, Hey, St. John's has a fantastic reputation for schools. You know, that's a great place to start. Um, and then other families are like, you know, public school is not really what we're pursuing. Our concern is where am I closest to therapies and or a private school setting. So um, in the South Point area of Jacksonville, there are a lot of different clinic-based resources and some ABA-based schools. Um, mm -hmm. St. Augustine also has some as well. Um, there are some children that attend the, uh, the School for the Deaf and Blind that also have a diagnosis of autism as well. So um, there's, again, those comor comorbidities there. Um, but there are a lot of different options, Montessori placements and things like that. So really it's going to depend on what the family's looking for. I hate to give a, a generic answer, but no, no, it's at very all. much I, dependent on, you know, what is most of importance to them, you know? Got it. Yeah. No, I'm not going to keep probing you for oh, a specific area. I mean, I miss, I sell real estate. So I'm like, where should I where send should them? Target? Yeah. Where do I, I will where? say a lot of families love uh, the Nocatee area just because of the water parks and there's a lot of different parks so when you have a child on the spectrum it's really important that again you feel like you have an inclusive supportive environment and that you know one there are other people that share you know the same struggles that you're going through but also are super sympathetic to that and then again like the water features are huge you know it's so many different options it's sometimes like living in disney because you've got so yeah. many different parks to hop around in and yeah um all of that so i would say that's attractive i would think to a lot of different families and families that we've spoken with before um yeah. but really anywhere that they feel safe and supported family enriched areas yeah. where we can rely on each other and be exactly. supportive right yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah, and I, I'll tell you what, I've heard a lot about St. Augustine yeah. in the School for Deaf and Blind. I've heard a lot about that place. It's yeah. pretty incredible, actually. Yeah, they do really. Because uh, St. Augustine's not that big. No. It is, and it is St. John's County people, just so you know, they're a good, uh, St. John, St. Augustine is St. John's County. Um, um, but I'll, I've heard so much about it where people move from across the country to be right. around there. Yeah. And I, I, you know what, I, I love people that are, you know what, they're like willing to do whatever they can for their children. Mm -hmm. And that warms my heart because, yeah. you know, me, I'll do anything for my girls. Absolutely. And and I know you, you're the same. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is, this has been really good information. I'm, I'm just really hoping I'm not forgetting what other questions I should be asking you. What else can we offer people here? um as far no, as thing i just thought of um to mention is that families really will travel so even if they decide we really love to live in st john's county like silverleaf or nocatee or durban we really like this area but the school is in jacksonville families will commute you know to find what they need so really it's just about finding like the general area where they're going to need supports yeah and then most families are willing to Go to the moon you know to make sure that they're able to access care for their children yeah and jacksonville is really geographically spread out we're one of the largest cities in the country geographically um so it is very spread out and i, I think one of the questions i was thinking in the back of my head as a provider since you said there's waiting lists and there's not a lot of providers what are what is does the state doing anything about that or is there any benefits to providing those services as a provider, do you, could you answer that question? 
Um, so in terms of what the state is doing, I, I haven't seen a ton of movement in terms of like opening more doors for people to access care. A lot of um, the programs are run by, you know, individual practitioners or groups. So it's not necessarily like a state issue. The state mm -hmm. does have Medicaid funding um, for children. So that's helpful uh, if you have a child on the spectrum or with ADHD or related diagnosis. They are able to access, you know, funds through that if they don't have insurance, for example. But um, in terms of being able to fill the void, I think it's just a need for more practitioners. So we need folks to kind of come here um, yeah. and be able to serve these different roles of speech therapists and occupational therapists um, and just really diversify and help out. Yeah, I mean, we, everybody moves here because I, at least I know a lot of my, my parents' friends move here because of. Baptist, Mayo, you mm -hmm. I mean, you have some of the most amazing hospitals uh, yeah. at your fingertips here. And then, like you said, Wolfson's mm -hmm. uh, Children's Hospital. I mean, there's just so much here already that it would really be a bummer to hear that there's just not enough people providing speech therapy or ABA or, or all those things. So if you're watching this and you have someone in your family that's suffering with this and you're not sure what you're doing with your life, Sorry, I believe there's certain things that are meant to be for a reason. You know, like my 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 sister-in-law, she had children that had learning disabilities growing up. You know what? She became an amazing, amazing teacher for children that specifically were going through that. So that's great. Yeah. I lovingly encourage people to to pursue that uh, avenue if you're not. Why not? You're right. learning everything yeah. you can about it anyway. Exactly. Um, you know, be a be a support to somebody else. That's what it all all about helping each other out. So finally, I'm just going to end with this. I know that I've heard also people say we're considering Jacksonville or mm -hmm. or Colorado, and I'm like, well, first of all, on a, on a real <laughs> estate side, Colorado. I mean, it is expensive here, but Colorado real estate is right. now insane. Wow, it's very expensive, and not to mention I'm been skiing there it is cold but um <laughs> it gets cold here but not like that not that no, cold no 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 snow what can you tell me uh why is colorado's the number one state i'm hearing about for for families of children with autism i think because there's a lot of different opportunities there in terms of you know you've got seasons for one i'm sure that's nice for a lot of families of like mm -hmm. we have a summer but then we actually have a fall um but there's a lot of you know outdoor time so a lot of families with children on the spectrum like to get out and about and you know maybe burn some of that energy or just engage in other opportunities with other families outside um they similar to us they also have you know a medicaid program that will cover services so i think that's attractive to families um a lot of you know people just in general have moved to colorado so it's become an attractive place to live so i think a lot of families with special needs have also moved there as well just because you know, mom or dad's job is relocating them and they've seen that there are access to a lot of different services. Um, a lot of military personnel move there as well. So again, going back to that, you've got the exceptional family members program. You've got families that can be connected to these um, really robust sites for services. So I think that may be why, but honestly, it could just be, you know, a lot of people moving out that way and they've decided to join them. Yeah. What you're telling me is everything near nature is almost an attractive thing. Yeah. Um, it's a good way to, you know, get outside and meet other people. And, yeah. You know. So the so the the whole thing I read about being close to a big city so you can have uh, accessibility to all these programs, I get that, but it's not also being close to nature. It's, again, dependent on the family, but it's nice to be able to do different things on the weekends and it's not yeah. like, oh, it's 90 degrees again today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> cool. Well, this is I I can't thank you enough uh, for taking your time out. Uh, this lady took time out on a Sunday, folks, because that's how busy <laughs> she is to to provide this information. We're going to go ahead and put as much information. I took some notes and I'll get with you to put more information in the description of some of these programs. I really don't know. Um, sometimes where families are in this whole situation they could be at the very beginning and have no idea what's going on um, right. or or they've been dealing with it with it for a while and they get they get moved here because they're military or for a job or whatnot and they're going okay where do we go right you know exactly. so uh, I, I i'd love to be that resource because that just makes my why and what i do so much more fulfilling than just selling a house Absolutely. so 
Um, is there anything else you want to add? Not that I can think of. Last um, chance. No, I think no. that you've done a great job, you know, showing families how to access services, you know, when they are looking at this area. Yeah, cool. Well, Amanda, thank you so, so You're much. No um, I promise I won't give out your number and send everybody <laughs> to you because <laughs> I have a feeling there's a big need out there, but we're going to get this information in the description and uh, I will see you later. All right. Thanks, sounds later. Good. See you. Thanks so thank much. You. Cheers. I hope you found that interview super informative. If we missed any questions you may have, make sure you leave it in the comments below. And like I said before, if you're trying to make a move in nine days or 90 days, um, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. We'd love to help you make a smooth move here to the Jacksonville area. And until then, we hope to see you around town.